Great things are happening. Powerful things are going on. Your life is changing today. Amen? Let's open our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 5. <clears throat> I'm not going to be long in this part because we got some more serious business of heaven to do. Amen? That's what we've been doing already. We haven't known, right? Calling people up, laying hands on the sick, seeing people delivered. Woo, glory to God. We could stop church right now and say we have had a really powerful day. Don't you love the fire of God? Do you know you're called to carry the fire, by the way? But you got to stir yourself up. Amen? I am not preaching to a dead church, right? If you're feeling dead today, I said check your pulse and say, Arise, O sleeper, from the dead. And Christ will shine his light on you. So, so anyway, I'm just saying, God puts me in places to stir things up. And once I begin to accept that in a good way, then, okay, Lord, this is what we do. This is what we do. And then we see signs and wonders and miracles happen because we obey. Amen? So 2 Timothy 5, and you're called to that too, by the way. 1 Timothy? 1 Timothy. No. Sorry, 2 Timothy 1. Yes. Thank you. Verse 5. I am calling up memories. This is Paul, by the way, speaking into his protege, Timothy, who was a young pastor at the time. He says, I'm calling up memories of your sincere and unqualified faith, the leaning of your entire personality on God in Christ in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness, a faith that first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am fully persuaded dwells in you also. <laughs> and because of this faith, that is why I would remind you to stir up. Turn your neighbor and say, stir it up. Stir up. Stir up. Rekindle the flames and the embers of fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire, which is in you by the laying on of my hands. Okay, so right here, this is talking about the Holy Spirit. And Timothy is being reminded to stir up, stir up that faith that was imparted to you, right? Look at that. There's a generational blessing here. I encourage you parents in the house, raise your children in the knowledge of the Lord. Raise your children in the word of God, in the words of faith, right? The Bible says in another scripture, my children are called for a sign and a wonder, right? They're not called to be under. They're called for a sign and a wonder unto God, amen? And so are yours. So we have to remember what has been placed on the inside of us. And when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says the Holy Spirit now came to make his home in your heart. How many saved people do I have in the house today? You receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior already, right? So you have the Holy Spirit already living on the inside of you. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy to do. Stir up, fan into flame, the gift of the Holy Ghost, which we've seen in operation here today. Stir up that inner fire. So if you feel like your inner fire is like smoldering, and just like kind of the itsy bitsy fire. But you know what happens when the wind comes on that fire? What happens when the wind comes on that fire? It begins to fan that into flame into a roaring fire. So you and I, we need to say, I'm not going to be asleep at the wheel. I'm going to rehearse this faith that I have been taught, and every time I get into the Word, the Bible tells me in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when I'm hearing these words, faith is rising. When I'm stirring myself up and praying in the Holy Spirit, I'm fanning into flame this fire of God. Woo, glory to God. You know, church, it calls you to shake off some stuff. Right, you have to say, I'm, I'm stirring myself up. I'm not going to allow myself to be a dead Christian. I'm not going to allow myself to be caught up in religion to the place where I'm not helping anybody. I'm not speaking a word of life. I'm not leading anybody to Jesus. Well, today is the day to turn all that around and say, I choose to fan into flame this gift of God. 
You know, every day I got to get up and say, I choose to fan into flame by praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm praying in my Holy Ghost language, right? Praying in the Spirit. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 26 and 27, when I pray in the Spirit, I am praying out the perfect will of God. Amen? So church, this is not a spectator place. But this is a place where you are called to carry the fire. Because when you leave this place, what you have received is placed upon you and placed on the inside of you to carry. Right? Nobody in the sound of my voice of New Life Fellowship should be a dead Christian. <laughs> right? You've got, hey, if I'm out of my box for a long time now, you've you got to be out of your box too. Right? It's time for us to stir up the gift of God. But I felt like there is a weariness that's come upon some of our people. So that's why the Holy Spirit wanted me to minister this to you today. you got to stir this up, right? you got to be like the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 that said, you know what, I see Jesus coming. He's my healer. And no matter what the crowd is surrounding him, I'm going to touch that hem of his garment. And when I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. I will be healed and be made whole. And so, church, you got to have your... You're stirring yourself up. You're reaching. You're not going to just sit back and say, I haven't seen God move in this area of my life yet. Oh, well. Oh, no. You're going to get up and say, huh, I reach toward what he has already promised me. Amen? I reach toward the promises of God. I fight the good fight of faith. I lay hold. Because there's got to be some lay and hold, church of the promises of God. Healing is your promise. Delivering is your promise. Prosperity is your promise. Jesus already purchased it all for you. You're not called to live a life of torment. You're not called to live a life where the enemy is running all over you. Uh-uh. You all know my favorite scripture, don't you? 1 John 4, verse 4. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. When you got the greater one living on the inside of you, you got to stir him up and say, I stir up that gift I've been given because I, what is in me, who is in me is greater than the devil on my worst day. Amen? So we got to know what we've got, church. And today, I've, I've told different people here, different ministry leaders, and we're going to come up here, Angie and the worship team, we're going to come up here and start worshiping again. And I really felt led that if all of you are willing, which I would be willing if I were you, to come up, we're going to make a line, and we want to pray over all of you. We want to cast off any weariness, any discouragement. And this is a day of fresh fire, by the way. This is a day, is a day of fresh, fresh fire. So the leaders that are coming up here, they're going to pray in the Holy Ghost and lay hands on you in part over you and really loose you from anything that's been trying to hold you back. Amen? I'm all in. Are you all in?